The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. So there's this fellow, Jewish fellow, religious guy, had a bar mitzvah in Cleveland on Shabbat. Saturday night, his wife says, honey, let's sleep overnight and we'll go tomorrow morning. He says, no, I have an appointment meeting in Brooklyn on, sun- on Sunday morning. I have to drive now. Come on, honey, I have to. He has as many ounces of caffeine as he possibly can, and he gets into his car. And he's driving, and he's known. He could fall asleep on a dime. So he's drowsy, but he's driving. He's no, no, wake up. He starts talking to his wife. His wife can't really drive on the highway at night. He's driving. He's talking to the kids in the back. He's driving. He's getting drowsy. He says, I better pull over to the side, but there's no shoulder for, shoulder for another 10 miles. He's driving, and then for a split second, he closed his eyes. Lost control of the car. He just remembers hearing his wife scream and his kids flip. And then he remembers the impact. And then the car tumbled over to the side and landed on his back. He, was, he had glass inside of him. He was heard screaming. Within minutes, there were lights lit up everywhere because someone called 911. He's taken on a stretcher and brought to the hospital. He's sitting in the hospital, where's my family? Where's my family? No one answers him. They just put in, they make him unconscious. They're going to do surgeries. About, a, I don't know how long later, he wakes up. He's in casts all over his body. He's got tubes attached to him, but he's alive. Where's my family? No one will answer. Finally, a doctor comes in. He says, where's my family? The doctor says, oh, no one told you? They're all fine. Your wife, your children... They're in the other rooms. They're also a little banged up, but they're okay. You could go right after this procedure. We'll bring you to see them. He wheels into his wife's room, his children's room, and they're all okay. They're in body cast. They wouldn't go to school for months. But a year later, he made a su'udah to da'ah to thank Hashem for what had happened to him and his whole family somehow in a car that flipped over was totally okay. And he says, in order to thank Hashem, I have to give back. So he joined Chaverim. You know Chaverim? They're a very good organization. You should know them. Get stuck in your car. They're there for you. The house, they're awesome. He joined them. He says, I want to do more. He saw one day an ad in a newspaper to, to get your blood marrow tested. He got it tested, and then he left. Nothing happened. A few months later, he gets a phone call. He says, you're an exact match with a patient. Are you willing to donate your blood marrow? He says, yes. I want to give. Yes, I will. But you cannot know who the patient is. That's pre- patient, whatever they call it, privacy, whatever. They're not allowing you, you can't, you can't see the patient in any way. Okay, no problem. He comes, procedure's not nearly as bad as he thought it would be. A few hours, he's tired. I mean, they put him to sleep. A few hours, they take out what they need to do. They harvest the blood. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Then, with, he's weak for a few days, and he's good to go. No idea. He just gets a report. The patient's doing nicely. The patient had cancer. Now the patient's doing better. The patient's improving. The patient's improving. No communication. The patient's really doing nice. Good. Forgets about it. Five years later, he gets a phone call from the nurse who did the procedure. She says, the patient now wants to reveal themselves to you. He says, okay, I'd love to see them. I'd love to meet them. He goes to the hospital, and he could hear like a whole family. It's a girl, woman. He hears children, and he hears parents, grandparents. He hears the whole scene. And he walks into the room, and he's instant. He says, they're not Jewish. They're Polish. He was, his parents were Holocaust survivors. His parents were passed away in the Holocaust. He, all he heard about was about how bad the Poles were to the Jewish people. And he walks into the room, and he sees these kids, Polish kids, they even have accents. He says, this is who I saved? He doesn't know what to say. He's smiling. He's talking to them. And then they say, you want to eat something? He says, no, I don't. The grandma says, oh, you mean you're Jewish? He says, yeah. She says, oh. He's like, oh, what? <laughs> she says, oh, you know, in my country, in my back in Poland, I was in this little town, and we had all Jewish neighbors, and we knew many Jews. And then, sadly, they were all taken and all killed, mass murdered. And he's like, why is she telling me this? This is, this is Hashem. I, I thought I was giving back to something nice. 
She says, and then there was one girl on my block. And one night, Nazis were coming. I said, I got to set up this girl. I put her in a barrel, and I fed her food for one night, two nights, three nights. After three nights, I told my parents. My parents flipped out. Why are you saving this girl for? We could get killed. Our whole family get killed. But then they had the compassion too, and they took care of this little girl. Her name was Judy. They took care of her. We watched her for a few months, and then we sent her into the forest to the refugees. And then we got more Jews, and more Jews came through our house. She says, after the war, I got to meet Judy. She moved to America, got married, had children and grandchildren, and I met her whole family. And I always wondered. I had such respect for God's chosen people. And I always wondered if God would ever pay me back for taking care of His children. Thank you for being the one who did. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org.